right. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good. I think it's funny when you say, how's everybody doing? And people go, woo. Well, that's not really an answer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I do it too. So I'm making fun of myself as well. Well, good morning and welcome to Connect. My name is Stacy, and I am Pastor Derek's wife. And this is my son in whom I am well pleased. My, uh, my name is Devin Fry. If you're new here, first of all, thank you for coming. Can we give it up for our first time guests and new people here? Welcome, welcome. And uh, I hope you like who you sit next to because you're going to be here for, Dad said we have two and a half hours. So it's a special service today. Look at, just okay, kidding. Yeah, good. Just kidding. I'm just, just joking, <laughs> sort of. Who would stay for two and a half hours? Liars, liars. <laughs> all you guys. Hey, go ahead. Uh, high five your neighbor. Give him a big old church hug. Love him real fast. Get to know him a little bit. Okay, sorry. Whatever. <laughs> nice. That was a turkey, I think, twice. Exactly. Thanksgiving season. Anyways, hey, a couple things. Uh, I got to get off my chest really fast. Um, we did family photos as a, obviously a family a couple weeks ago, and uh, my father posted something on Instagram and Facebook that I just got to refute completely. So uh, in the comments and in the sections, he did a hashtag, and it said, additions coming. So... Uh, a bunch of people have been coming up to me and Natalia and uh, just been like, hey, so are you guys pregnant? If you don't know, I've been married for about eight months now. It's been awesome. And people have been coming up to me and be like, hey, so are you guys pregnant? I'm telling you, we are not pregnant. I would never announce it through dad's hashtags on Facebook. Okay? And just to clarify, we're not pregnant either. Yes. I would never announce it through dad's hashtags So I asked either. him to take it off and he didn't even delete the post. So he's a big doofus for that post, but whatever. So, uh... I just want to clarify that, so don't come up to me and say congratulations. We are not pregnant. We practice often because we're married. Hello, come on, somebody. But um, okay, TMI. It's a benefit. It's a benefit of marriage. Uh, anyway, so it's uh, we're gonna have a good day today. Uh, open your Bibles. This is a great transition right there. Bibles to First Kings Holy. chapter ten. First Kings chapter ten. And uh, as you're turning there, a couple other things. Uh, we have the At The Movie series coming up. Who's excited about that? Oh, it's awesome. That looks awesome, man. And uh, it's always a good time to bring a friend to church. But, man, At The Movies, there's something special about it. It's so engaging, so vibrant, so exciting. And uh, we're going to ask you guys. This is a great time to invite some friends. So feel free. Just invest in some people. Send out some text messages and love some people. And this is a great time to bring a friend to church. Amen? Yep. Amen. That's going to be awesome. So uh, Jason highlighted it beautifully, but the turkey outreach yesterday, the turkey giveaway was amazing. Uh, if How you many were, were here, there? I was Sorry. about to ask that. Awesome. That's okay. awesome. We had uh, just an incredible few testimonies. I'll share a few a little bit later in the message. But if you're uh, at your scripture in 1 Kings 10, say, I'm there. Uh, did anybody bring their actual Bibles today? Can you raise it up real fast if you brought a Bible? Love it. Our church I is getting less and less Bibles. saved. Awesome. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> yeah, we got some work to do, all right? <laughs> First Kings chapter 10, I'm reading on an NIV translation. This is what it says. It says, when the queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relationship to the Lord, she came to test Solomon with hard questions. Now, how many know that's, that's really the, the basis of the world today? People are coming to Christians or coming to believers, and they got some questions, man. A lot of people got some questions. And I love what it goes on and says. It says, in arriving uh, at Jerusalem, with a very great caravan, with camels, spices, quantities of gold, precious stones. She came to Solomon and talked with him about all that she had on her mind. And Solomon answered all of her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon, the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. Another translation says her breath was taken away. Isn't that awesome? Her breath was taken away. And she said to the king, the report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true. But I did not believe these things until I came and saw with my own eyes. See, I love that scripture right there because a lot of people that you know have questions about God, have questions about church. And you're not necessarily going to reach them through intellectual conversation or persuasive speeches. You need to have this mentality, the come and see mentality. Mm -hmm. You just got to come and check it out. You got to come to church. You got to encounter the presence of God. You got to see God's kind of people. And I'm telling you, that's a game changer right there. Anybody else agree with that? Like a come and see mentality. You just ought to bring some people to church, man. And they're going to have their game changed forever. And so it goes on and says, uh, how, uh, verse 7, But I did not believe these things until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half of it was told to me. 
In wisdom and in wealth, you have far exceeded the report that I heard. How happy your people must be. How happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Praise be the Lord your God who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. Skipping down to verse 13. Uh, King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired and asked for, besides what he had given her out of his royal bounty. Then she left and returned with her retinue to her, entire, her, to her country. And today, if you're taking notes, I believe it's on your notes already, but our title is A, a Breathtaking Church. And that's kind of the subject we want to talk from today. I'm going to have my mom pray us into the message. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together with believers and with our family. And um, we just ask that your presence would be here. We invite your presence in. I pray that um, the ears would hear that what you want them to hear and that would penetrate their heart, Lord Jesus, into what, the, what you're telling each person here today. Father, we, um, we just ask that your, your mighty spirit would do great works in our church and continue to use our church to bless others. And we also ask that you would be the patriots, dear Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> um, has anybody in here ever had their breath taken away before? Come on by, show of hands. I need some engagement. Anybody had their breath taken away before? And I'm not talking like you get punched in the stomach and your breath. <gasps> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking like a shock and awe kind of moment. Anybody in here? Um, I can tell you the thing that stands out to me the most in my life was uh, on my wedding day when I saw my wife for the first time. Man, it was an incredible, incredible moment. My, Natalia's right here. Natalia, can you stand up really fast and wave at everybody? Come on, babe. You can do it. This is my beautiful wife. Can you give it up for her? Woo-hoo. She's... She is so fine, so gorgeous. But uh, I remember literally, like, my breath was taken away on that day. I saw her for the very first time. I realized this is going to be the woman I spend the rest of my life with. She was gorgeous. She was beautiful. I was like, she is fine. She is all mine. Come on. (laughs) And she's walking down the aisle. And uh, literally, I just remember being overwhelmed with, like, emotion and starting to cry a little bit. My nose started around. I'm like, Mom, get me a tissue right now. I need to get a tissue, wipe it, and then I'm good. And, uh... She's, I mean, she saw it. You, you remember what it was like, right? Yes, I actually have a video of it because I'm sitting right there in the front. And whenever a bride comes in, at, whenever we're at a wedding and the bride comes in, you know, everybody stands up and looks back and you can hear a collective like gasp, like, oh, you know, I look straight at the groom every time. I don't even look at the bride. I'm going to see her when she walks down, but I look at the groom and I happen to be sitting on the front row right in front of my son. So I took a video of this very moment where his breath was taken away. Do you want to see it? Well, I happen to have it. All right, don't judge. I do stop shaking in a minute. Hold on. Okay, there you go. Devin right here. (laughs) (laughs) Quickest tissue use ever. Look at her. His breath was taken away. I was just, I was trying to keep it together, you know, like, guys, there's a certain level of crying, like, I just, like, there, but I'm trying not to do the, that cry, I, I didn't want to do that cry, so, I don't know, my, like, my breath was taken away in that moment, and uh, uh, something we just want to talk about today is really what the local church should be, and we believe, and this is one in your notes, we believe the local church should be the most breathtaking place on the planet, That's right. and, uh, If you're new to church, I know this might be something that's a different kind of concept to you, but really we want to talk about what it says in this text. We want to extract like three different characteristics of what a breathtaking church really is. And uh, if you're taking notes, write down the first thought is this, is a breathtaking church requires commitment. Can you just say that with me? Say commitment. Commitment. A breathtaking church requires commitment. So it says here in uh, 1 Kings chapter 9, a chapter right before we read, it says this, It took Solomon 20 years, somebody say 20 years, 20 years, to build the Lord's temple and his own royal palace. Now, how many know nothing great was built in a day, right? Rome wasn't built in a day. Nothing great is built in a day. Oftentimes you hear the contrast between 
a, a mushroom and an oak tree. A mushroom swells in like five to seven hours, but an oak tree takes 60 years to build. And one thing lasts a long time, another lasts just a few moments. And we choose here not to swell, but to grow. And to grow, it takes commitment. It takes a while. It takes some time to build something that is breathtaking. And I wrote just a few things in my notes that I think would be good for you to hear. But listen, God did not give you your gifts or your talents to simply build your own platform, but he gave them to you so you could build God's kingdom. That's good. Say that again. That's I'm going to really go ahead and say like that again because you guys didn't, not, not enough of you said it, amen, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to do that again. That was some good preaching. Who's that? Come on, that's dad. Um, <clears throat> that was some good preaching. Uh, uh, that's funny. I don't care what you say. Yeah, for, that's good. <laughs> We're going to roast them today. Sorry, Dad. We're never going to be up here ever again together. <laughs> but if you write it on your connection card that we, you enjoyed us. <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding. Anyways, uh, what were we saying? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, like God did not give you your, your platform or your gifts or your talents to build your own platform, but to build God's kingdom. And I think what we have to understand today is like, like, the local church was not a man's idea. It was God's idea. Mm-hmm. And literally, our calling as believers or people of faith in here is to build the local church. Now, oftentimes you hear, you, maybe you've heard this before, uh, but imagine for a moment somebody says, Dev, I love you, but I don't really like your wife. How many know that's, he's going to get a slap in the face, right? A lot of people will say, I love Jesus, but I don't like his church. And that's a slap in the face to God. And so what I want us to understand today is, like, we are called as believers, as Christians, to build the local church. Now, I, I, I read this illustration. I thought it was awesome. Uh, this illustration is, is going to be great. So, so it said this. In order to have a fruitful and a healthy church, you need a few different ingredients. The first ingredient, obviously, you need, uh, you need to plant three rows of squash, all right, for a healthy church. You need to squash gossip. You need to squash criticism. You need a squash indifference. You also need just, you need seven rows of peas, okay? You need prayer. Come on, you need promptness. You, feel, you guys going with me? Promptness, perseverance, politeness, preparedness, purity, and patience. You also need seven uh, heads of lettuce. You need, let us be unselfish. Come on. Let us be faithful to serve. Let us search the scriptures on a daily basis. Let us keep doing good. Let us be obedient to God. Let us be truthful, and let us love one another. And lastly, of course, you need turnips, right? If I say turnip. You need turnips. You need a turnip to connect groups. Hello. You need a turnip to growth track. Come on, somebody. You need a turnip to serve. Turn up with joy even when things are hard. You need a turnip to church. Come on. Turnip. You need a turnip to church. You need a turnip at church. Hello. That's good. That's good. I don't care what you say. That's good. Um, (laughs) But, like, but don't don't just come to church, like, Get invested. Get rooted into a local church. Rooted into a belo- uh, into a community where you belong. You know, I would suggest to you that so many of us today would have some of our issues completely negated or refuted simply by just belonging to a local community, like just belong, just coming to church. How many know uh, irregularity is not a healthy thing, right? If you have an irregular heartbeat or a heartbeat that doesn't beat every second, right? That's a bad thing, right? If you don't go to gym on a regular basis, you're not going to see the results that you want, right? How many know it's an important thing, it's a good thing, it's a healthy thing to be part of a local church on a regular and a consistent Mm -hmm. basis? See, the Bible says this in Psalm 92. Let me read it, 12 through 15. It says, listen, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree, and they will grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Planted, somebody say planted. Planted. Planted in the house of the Lord. That doesn't just mean attend, that means get rooted, get connected, get established in the church. And they will flourish. I love that promise. This is a promise from God. If you, are, if you belong to a local church, you will flourish. Another version says, richly flourish. And then it goes on and says, they will still bear fruit in old age. Some of the experienced people in the room said amen. Amen. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. I just want you to write this truth down. I just want you to write this truth down. Sundays should be sacred. Something my parents taught me is, like, Sundays are for church. Like, we are in church. And I would just suggest to you and recommend to many of you guys, and all, all, many of you guys do such an awesome job with this, but it is such a healthy thing to just to belong and be a part of a local church every single Sunday. Regularly attend. Sunday should be sacred in this house. 
Like, it's a good thing. Our pastor and our leaders and our teaching team and our worship team and teams, period, like, we work too hard for you not to come on a regular basis and get poured into, get full of God, get full of his love. And I'm telling you, it's just a healthy thing to be a part of a local church and be committed to a local church. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, Mom. One of the things we told our kids is, you know, any employee, any job that you're going to get is you tell them, sorry, you can't work on a Sunday. Um, you know, I'll be one of your best employees. I'll be faithful. I'll be a hard worker. But I can't work on a Sunday. And they don't because Sunday is family fun day for us. I mean, this, this, is, this is our family. This is our extended family fun day. And they're going to be committed in the local church. Um, one, one thing, lastly, I want to say. The great task, I heard one guy say this, the great task of a local church is to uh, reach sinners and point them to heaven and to get saints and get them out of bed. <laughs> don't be that kind of Christian where you, you have a hard time getting out of bed on a Sunday morning because I'm telling you, it'll be really healthy for you just to be in a local community. That's right. So our point number two on, so the church should be committed. Um, the, the church should be, on number two, is the most creative place on the planet. First Kings 10, 4, and 5. I'm going to just highlight the, um, the verse that he read this morning. A little help here. There we go. Okay. Um, but count with me the things that the Queen of Sheba sees when she walks into the palace, Solomon's palace. It says, when the Queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their, in their robes, also what they were wearing, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. So one, like he said, one version says her breath was taken away. Another version says there was no spirit left in her. It was, she was in awe. And that's what we as a local church want to do when people walk into our church for them to go, wow. I mean, we even heard it yesterday at the Turkey Outreach. People would come in, they wanted to tour, see what was going on, and they were like, wow, I didn't even know this was in here. This is amazing. This is awesome. You know, and that was, we didn't even have like coffee inside that, inside the room downstairs. It was all outside. But that's what I think, you know, I'm overwhelmed sometimes at the creativity of our father. I mean, just looking at how many of you love the fall? Okay. And all the, all the different colors of leaves. Like I think that I'm from Alabama. And so we have like it's like two seasons. There's like not much colors. Um, it's like hot and then cooler. Um, so I love the seasons up here. And I am 100% certain that during the fall season, I know that God is looking down from above and going, there's New England. There's my frozen chosen. I love the colors. Look how awesome I am. You know, I mean, he could have made the world just monochromatic, like one color could have just done two colors, but he made all these colors. Like when I'm riding into my neighborhood, we have like lime green trees. We have forest green trees. We have reds and yellows and oranges. And there's like a purple tree. There's a purple tree in my neighborhood. And I'm like, God, this is so awesome. It's, you are so creative. He didn't have to do that, but he's creative. I think about how he made humans. I mean, okay, if you, I'm a people watcher. So one time I'm sitting at a traffic light, and I'm just watching people, you know, curve and turn and go on. And I'm looking at everybody's faces, and nobody looks alike. Does that, is that, like, shocking to anybody else? God had, like, five or six inches with just a few colors, a few shades of skin pigment color, with a few shades of eyes color and hair color. And nobody looks alike? Like, does that? No? Okay. I'm overwhelmed at it sometimes. That much space and God makes nobody look alike. It's awesome. I also think that God gave us our senses so that we could be able to experience this world in a creative and unique way. So like everybody has something that they really just love to smell or see or hear. Like I love the color maroon. It just somehow just makes me happy. I love scented candles. Like in the fall, you got to have your pumpkin spice candle, right? Where are my candle lovers at? Okay. Okay. And then... Notice like, there was no guy that said anything know, right there. Except for I love one. candles. Oh, never mind. I'm not supposed to do that. Bacon um, candles. Come on. All right. Bacon, nobody. All right. Okay. Great, whatever. So any smell that you might like. Venison candles. Come on, Brian Barnes. You got it. Oh, my yeah. Lanta. No. Mm -mm, that's not happening. Um, but like the smells, it just makes you happy. Kind of, you know, like when I'm going Christmas shopping, I want to chew peppermint gum. It's not the same as chewing like chewing polar ice, ex, you know, extra gum in the summer. It's spearmint gum in this. Like, it just makes me happy. Is no one else like me? Okay, I'm just weird. I, she's, she's really creative, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I am. But here's just kidding, why. I love you, Mom. This Don't is hurt why. Me. It's when I have those things or I see, you know, burgundy or maroon or, 
like I'm experiencing those things, and it makes me happy. It warms my heart. I just feel happy. I, I see somebody going, yes, okay, one person's like me in this room. Um, two people, awesome. Okay, so, but the reason why I say this is because when people are coming into our church, we want to be able to have those same experiences because everybody has something that just takes their breath away or makes them open up their heart. Like working with kids for over 20 years, really for my whole life, I practically have worked with kids. But like if you open their little heart, they're so much more willing to listen to what you're having to say and to learn from you. Because like just getting kids out of the cars in the morning, I'm like, hey, handsome, how are you doing? And they stand up like they're handsome. I'm like, hey, beautiful. Oh, I love your boots. I love, she loves my boots, you know, and they're, it starts their day out right. It opens up their little heart. Humans, big people, are no different than little people. We want our heart to be open before we're going to listen to somebody, and as soon as your heart is open, it's like, okay, what do you have to say? So let me just paint the picture for what our church is doing. So we have a creative team here that is phenomenal, and um, like we had this one young lady. So in the in the 508, which is our next generation of um, youth and young adults, we've had it said. You've heard it said probably that Christianity is one generation away from extinction. Like if we don't tell the next generation about Jesus, who's gonna? It fizzles out. Okay. So like not on our watch. That's not happening here with our with this leadership here. So one of our girls that's in the a young lady in the 508. She actually was at school, and she um, met this girl, and she asked her, she's like, hey, do you want to go to church with me? And the girl was like, I haven't been to church in, you know, 10 years. And so Tori, our friend, um, decided to show her this video of the 508, and it had, like, all the lights and the lasers and the smoke machines, and, you know, it had people jumping up and down and worshiping God and somebody preaching and somebody rapping, you know, and the girl was like, what? Like, that's church? I'll go to that church. Okay, it took her breath away. Literally, she said, what? Like, it took her breath away. That's what we want to do. We want to be able to use our creativity that God has given us to be able to bring people in so that they go, oh, my gosh. You know, and sometimes, honestly, I have to say, it kind of chaps my hide when older generation goes, why do they need all those lights and lasers, you know, and smoke? And, um, I mean, what happened to just Jesus? Like, hello, Jesus said, that I'm the light of the world. Like, bring on the light shows. If that's what it takes to get the next generation to come into this church, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do everything short of sin to get people in here to tell them about Jesus. We want to open their hearts. And it's not, honestly, it's not just for the next generation. Like, it's when somebody comes in the door and they smell the coffee down there. And they're like, oh, I can have a cup of coffee. And it kind of just brings walls down or a mom comes in and she has a newborn baby and she's like you know my my baby's crying and oh hey we have a nursing mother's room there's some plush seating in there there's a video that you can still watch the service I mean how many of you moms have ever thought why do I even go to church when my baby has to be nursed the whole time like why do I even go any moms ever felt like that okay and we have a nursing mother's room so we can take their breath away they go I can I can still listen to the service and nurse my child. You know, it's an awesome thing. We are very strategic at what we do here in our creative, uh, on um, being able to meet people's needs so that we can open their heart up so that we can give them Jesus. And that's what, um, that's what the 508 is so awesome at and being able to do their, use their creativity and bringing people in to know Jesus. I heard heard one guy say, uh, he goes, uniqueness was God's gift to you, but creativity is your gift to God. So good. And, like, God has placed incredible gifts and talents in every single one of us. You've probably heard me say this before, but I'll preach it until you get, you get it. But there's so many people just sitting on their gifts and talents. You probably remember that story of the parable of talents where one guy gives five, gets five talents, another gets two, another gets one. And the one puts it in the ground and just covers it up. He doesn't want to waste his talent, but he just leaves it there. And, God gets, and this guy gets angry at him because he didn't multiply or use his gift. There are so many people in this church and in churches all over America who are simply not even using their creativity, not using their gifts or their talents. And I'm telling you, there are some ministries or there are some teams in this church that haven't been established yet that could literally change the whole church because you're sitting on that talent and you're sitting on that gift. And you're the one that's supposed to lead that team. There are some small groups in here that have not been established or, 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 
uh, made yet because you're sitting on your gift and talent when really you could be reaching so many people out there. You'd be reaching so many people in here, getting people in community and in relationship with one another. But because many of us just sit on our creativity that God has given us, and I'm just telling you, it's, 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 it's tough, you know? Like, yeah, I, one of the scriptures, um, 1 Corinthians 9, verses 19 through 23, is Paul talking, and he says, to the weak I became weak to win the weak. He says, I, be, I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means, I might save some. Like, that's what we need to have that mentality is use your gifts, become all things to all people. Like, if you have a gift, somebody else would have that same gift that would be able to connect with you that you would be able to reach that I can't reach or that Pastor Derek can't reach or that Devin can't reach or that somebody else can't reach. But you can reach that person because they have that same interest, that same creativity, that same gift that you do. So everybody, God placed you in this body so that you can use your gift. And, you know, like I said, we just, our creativity, I, I think that just the way we even gave turkeys away yesterday is a very creative way to show the community how much we love them and how much we're willing to go the extra mile and just be like, hey, here's a turkey, you know, enjoy it. And it, it's not just 725 turkeys that we gave away, but it's like Jason said, it's 725 families that were touched. I mean, that's a big reach. And it was a creative way to be able to do it, which leads me to the, the last point here is that the church should be the most generous place on the earth. And, you know, being able to, Pastor Derek had a great, um, you know, goal set in mind for how many turkeys he wanted to give. And when we took up the offering for the turkeys, it far, you all, our church, far surpassed his goal. So we were able to buy even more turkeys and bless more people because you, our church, was generous. So I just want to say thank you from us to you all, like, for being a generous church, it's an amazing church that we're a part of here. Um, yesterday, during the turkey giveaway, uh, I brought several of my friends out to Framingham, and uh, we went to the Section 8 housing area. We got pointed to there, and we basically knocked on doors and gave turkeys away. We gave about 50 turkeys away, and I can tell you, it led to some of the most amazing conversations. Uh, we were literally knocking on doors and saying, hey, we're from Connect Community Church, and we just want to give you a free turkey. I don't know if you have one for Thanksgiving or anything like that. If you have family that you would like to give this to, but we just want to bless you with it. And there was one particular lady. She might be in this room. If you're here, Patricia, thank you so much for coming. But we, uh, we had a woman open up the door. We got to bless her with the turkey. Then the, the woman's house, her name is Patricia, we gave her a turkey. And then another friend of hers who was visiting, just taking care of her, we gave her a turkey. And Patricia begins to open up about all the stuff that she's kind of been through in life, some of the, the hurts and the pain she's gone through to the, the sicknesses and the broken bones she has. And so Kevin Espin and I, we just got to go over to her uh, and pray for her. We got to minister to her, got to give her some kind of deliverance kind of stuff. It was, it was amazing. And this happened uh, time and time again, door to door, happened so many times. And here's the principle I want to give you, is this generation will open up doors that conversations never could. Genero sorry, generosity will open up doors that conversations never could. Um, and I just, I, I hope some of us in here get it today, but like generosity is just something that we need to be defined by. And I think we do such a good job, but I, I really want to pray and ask us that we go to another level. You know, Dad was talking about it not too long ago. We just went through a, a financial series. And, like, to see where the church has been is absolutely amazing. To see what we gave to is absolutely amazing. We have one of the most generous churches on the planet here. But, listen, we got campuses to build. We got people to reach. We got businesses to establish. Like, God, how many know God is going to use this church greatly and mightily, not just in Ashland, Massachusetts, but in the Metro's community and Central Massachusetts? And that's going to happen through commitment. That's going to happen through creativity. And that's going to happen through generosity. Amen? That's right. Amen. I'll leave you with a couple last thoughts. Is, um, I was reading this story uh, in April uh, of 1999. There was a CNN headline. It said, Armed Robber. Um, what is it? Armed robber held up the church during an Easter service. And so basically in Louisiana, there was a gunman that walked into this church 45 minutes into the service and it held a guy, a guy at gunpoint. He said, you're going to get your tithes and offerings box and you're going to give me all that money. And so, of course, this church was, was terrified. They were nervous. And so they grabbed the tithes and offering box, gave it to the gunman. And this guy looks through it and he was severely disappointed by what was in the tithe box. And I'm not, I'm not judging anybody here if you don't tithe. This is not that, that point. But he gets it and he goes, what are all these $1 bills? 
And I'm just thinking in my mind that this guy probably thinks church people are the stingiest people on the planet. And can I just say, like, we're not that church. Come on, we're not that church. We're a church that's generous. We're a church that lives to give. Come on. We live to give. We believe that it's best. Uh, we're, we're blessed to give rather than just receive. We love to give here. We love to, we love to just give generously and abundantly above anything we can ask, think, or imagine. That's what God does for us. That's what we should do for other people. Amen? Amen. And then I love this scripture, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. It says this. The world of the generous gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. You know, your world gets bigger when you love to give, when you, when you live to give. Amen? Would you stand to your feet, and uh, we're going to pray. <clears throat> Man, I love what kind of we were talking about. I believe that Connect Community Church is a breathtaking church. Does anybody else agree with me on that? Like, we're a breathtaking church. And like I said before, man, we got campuses to build. We got places we got we to gotta go to. We got people we got to reach. And it's going to happen through commitment, creativity, and generosity. Man, I believe God's going to do something great with this church. Can you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? I want to give you a moment today. See, the Queen of Sheba actually went to King Solomon and saw all of his stuff, Saw the tr- went to the temple, saw his accolades, listened to his wisdom, literally was in the presence of God. And yet she went away, and she didn't receive Jesus or God as her Lord and Savior. And here's what I know. is Some people might be in church today. You might be in the house, but you don't know the Father. I'm going to give you a moment today to kind of commit your life to Jesus, to ask for his forgiveness, and to receive him as your Lord and Savior. So if that's you, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to ask you to shoot your hand up boldly and say, that's me. I want to commit my life to Jesus. I want to make him the Lord and Savior of my life and confess him as my Savior. One, Jesus loves you so much. And two, today is your day for salvation. Don't wait another minute. Three, if that's you, shoot your hand up if you want to commit your life to Jesus. I see your hand. Thank you so much. I see your hands in the back. I see your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anybody else? Thank you so much. You can put your hands down. And would everybody just repeat this prayer after me out loud? Say, Jesus, I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. I repent of my sin and I turn from my old ways and I turn to your ways. I believe in your death and resurrection. Thank you for dying for me. And I will live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Now, a second group I want to pray for, if you could bow your heads and close your eyes still. If that struck a chord with you at all, if you understood and, and realized that, that we're called to build a local church, we're called to build the house and, and to, uh, open up the doors to more family members. If that's you and you want to increase in your level of commitment in, in your creativity or using your gifts and talents or your generosity, could you just throw your hand up and say, that's me, I want to commit to those kind of things. Thank you so much. Hands all over the room. I love that. Thank God. Would you put your hands down? I'll pray for you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that every single person that raised their hands, that want to be uh, better stewards of what they have, their finances, their time, their talents, treasure. God, I ask that you would just give them a, a heart for people. Give them a heart for the local church. Holy Spirit, would you guide their lives, direct their paths, speak to them clearly, God, that they would know your voice, they would hear your voice and know what to do with it, Father. I pray you bless them abundantly, uh, financially, emotionally, relationally, God. Thank you so much for this church. We believe the best days are ahead of us and the best is yet to come. And come on, if you believe it, would you just say amen? Amen, amen and amen. Thank you guys so much.